Hi, I'm back. Haven't made a video in a while, so I thought I'd do a quick unboxing. Got this last week, and I haven't found time to open it up until today, so let's see what's inside the box. Okay, let's see here. Should be the latest game from Compass Games. Should be, let's see here, let me move this box out of the way. And see what we got here, just a minute. Ah, yes. A handy dandy knife here. Sorry for the background noise. All right, it is Bar Lev, 1973 Arab-Israeli War, deluxe third edition, designed by Chris Fawcett uh, for Compass Games. This is a remake of a remake. I think the original was done by Conflict Games back in the 70s, I think maybe, or late 70s, I don't know. And it was also picked up by Game Designers Workshop and um, redone by Frank Chadwick at the time. The Third Temple is in Danger, Moshe Diane, October 7th, 1973. Bar Lev, the 1973 Arab Israeli War Deluxe Edition, is an operational level game of the 1973 Arab Israeli War, known as the Yom Kippur War to the Israelis and the Ramadan War to the Arabs. Either of the two fronts, the Golan Heights and the Suez Canal may be gamed separately, or both can be linked to replay the entire war, except that you are in command. Operational planning is up to the players. You decide who is to mobilize and where the hammer blow is to fall. A great game for two to five players, but also playable solitaire. Let's just do a quick zoom in on the what looks to me like the Suez Canal map. All right, focus for me here, please. Oh, I know you can do it, come on. Well, apparently it's not gonna let me at the moment. You're gonna be stubborn today. Anyway, there's a shot of one of the maps. The uh, graphics look pretty decent on it. Uh, I think it's gonna be fairly Nice to play on. Take a quick gander at some of the counters that we'll find in the game. Looks like we have aircraft, air defense, missile units, artillery, armor and infantry, of course. Uh, I'm not quite sure what some of the other ones mean, but anyway, looks pretty awesome. Counters look very nice. <clears throat> Bar Lev, the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, represents an all-new game treatment of both the Conflict Games Company and Game Designers Workshop releases initially published in 1973 and 1977. Wow, looks like the Conflict Games Company got theirs out same year as the war. I wonder if people complained about that like uh, other people complain about games today that are published during the war, such as some of the Falk Falklands War um, games that were put out at the same time right during the ba uh, actual combat and shortly thereafter. Anyway, I digress. Uh, let's see. This deluxe edition of the classic John Hill and Frank Chadwick game goes beyond a mere reprint of the original games. It features a revised order of battle, redrawn maps, and completely rewritten rules that fully integrate ground, air, and air defense systems into a cohesive whole. The new sequence of play provides a deeply immersive experience for players. Two beautiful maps, 1,872 9 and 16th unit counters and informational markers, plenty of play aids, on and off map charts and displays, all developed to enhance the player's experience are, uh, and help create compelling narratives of the action. Bonus option, two sets of counters for tank battalions, NATO symbols or authentic armored fighting vehicle side views. Let's look at some of the specifics here. We have medium complexity, one turn equals one day, 
The map scale on the Suez map is 6 kilometers per hex. The Golan map is 3 kilometers per hex. Unit scale it ranges from battalion, company, uh, up to brigades. Number of players, 1 to 5, best with 2. Solitaire suitability is high. And the average time to play, 5 to 10 hours for a one map scenario and 12 or more for the full two map game. And components, what do we have? Two maps, eight counter sheets, three player aid cards, four display cards, one rules booklet, and one play booklet. The deluxe edition designer is Chris Fawcett. The GDW edition designer is Frank Chadwick. The CGC edition designer is John Hill. Project director, John Krantz. Game artist, Newt Grunitz. Grunitz, sorry. I pronounced that incorrectly, which I'm sure I did. Box cover design is Newt Grunitz and Brian Miller. Okay, let's see what we got. We got a very nice sturdy box. We have two standard 10-sided dice. We have uh, rules of play. Looks like it clocks in at about 32 pages total. Uh, let's go from the front, I guess. Looks like it's in. Uh, let me move this up here a little bit. Looks like it's in uh, color, full color. I uh, I assume here. We have sequence of play, zones of control, stacking, engineers and bridges. Got some decent looking uh, examples of play. We'll see how well they um, work when we get into the game. Uh, how well they help learn the various rules or guide players into learning the various rules. We have command and control. Israeli mobilization and front transfers. Here is a comprehensive example of command and control. Figure that all out when I get to it. We have Arab operational planning. We also have supply rules and the use of irregular forces. Supply is not very uh, long, only a few paragraphs. Maybe half of a page of paragraphs on a supply, I like that. We have artillery units. We have indirect fire. Something for the artillery units to do, obviously. More examples of play. And then we have, what? Air units and air combat. That's a... Uh, a part of the game I'm really looking forward to understanding and playing with. We have neutralized units. And then we come to, on page 21, get some room here, movement. Some examples of movement. We have reserve movement at the top there. Then we come over to helicopter transport. And we're at page 24 over here. We come to move this back a little bit more. Air transport. Then we have the Jordan River and amphibious units. And examples of air drop procedures. And let's see, on page 26, we finally come to combat. Direct fire general procedures, joint direct fire, headquarters in combat, first fire, first fire impulse, air bended tank missiles, nice examples of play, and then we have the refitting of units. And then we come to military aid, I'm guessing that's via the superpowers, United States and the Soviet Union. Then we have morale and exhaustion. Good to see that in a game. And then we have the Arab allies. 
some of their for some of the forces that would join in on their side. And we have the Israeli West Bank, South Sinai garrisons. And I wonder if that's the weren't they the Barlev forts or something? Wasn't that part of the whole deal? Their little I don't remember. I'll look it up. Showing my intense ignorance. And then we have optional rules, the Syrian exploitation and variable Arab operation points or operational points. And then we have game design credits and an index, which is nice to see. And the back of the book includes an extended sequence of play, which is nice. I will definitely make a copy of that and put it in plastic. All right, that's the rule book. Now we come to the playbook. Let's see here, what do we got? We have setting up the game, the Suez front. Uh, looks like we there's hex locations as well as holding boxes. That's quite a few units for just the uh, Suez front. I was looking for more of a smaller learning scenario. And we're still messing with the Suez front. It's like four or so pages of Suez front set up and stuff. Anyway, then we have the Golan front set up. And that looks like it takes several pages. It's a pretty good sized scenario. And we're still on the uh, Golan front, looks like. We have some sort of command reserves. We might get to move some units around or adjust some things, I guess. I don't know. And then we have the whole entire, what is it? One Front Game. The One Front Game provides a good introductory experience since it requires fewer units and fewer operational decisions. Well, there we have it. It is ideal for two or three players. All game rules that apply to the map along being used are in effect for a one front game with certain changes to the orders of battle as noted before. All right, then we have some uh, game variations. And then we have historical notes. So I'm guessing that the previous uh, Sinai and Suez or Golan Heights scenarios. Uh, also be combined into one large game and this is probably the training learning game I don't know now we have a little bit of errata down here it looks like hopefully nothing too earth-shattering looks like counter errata so I don't think that's going to be a big deal and then we have historical notes we have the various reference uh, works used we have player notes, we have designer notes, what else, and then we have comprehensive air examples, and actual uh, graphic demonstration of what looks to me like air, ground, Escort, interception, that type of stuff, ground attack. Ah, more examples from the uh, air rules. Nice graphics, nice color. Then we have resolution of air to air combat. Examples of how that's done. And what do we have over here? We have a lot of blank space here. What's going on here? This is the situation after air to air combat, and then we have surface to air combat is next. There's a giant blank spot there that's in association with this particular example of play. And then down here we have the surface to air combat, which was noted above. Anyway, we have the SAM tables and aircraft tables versus the various air units. What else we have here? Getting close to the end of the playbook. And looks to me like we're still on uh, air uh, 
examples of play. And that is a pretty involved uh, air system. And then we have air to ground table and we have train effects chart that pertains to this air combat example thing. And we continue on. Now we have the ground attacks, resolution of ground attacks. And then we have more terrain effects as they will affect ground attacks. And at the end, the last page is the last page of the air combat uh, comprehensive example. So anyway, just kind of a close up of some of the uh, uh, units and the graphics there and their graphics. Just kind of give you an idea what some of the aircraft are. I have no idea what the um, information presented on the counters is, but I'm sure we'll find out. This is the Egyptian Armed Forces off-map stacking boxes. And it looks like it's double-sided. What do we got here? Yep, same thing. And let's see what we have here. Another player aid card. One-sided. This is Syrian Air Force air tasking display, showing what position your units will be available, or if they're on air superiority, or if they've flown, boarded. I assume it probably has refitting or whatever. We've got air to air table combat, air to ground. The Syrian Armed Forces Reserves holding box. So a little bit of everything on that one. Oh, I see Israeli blue coming up. This is, this is the Israeli Air Force air tasking display for the Suez and the Golan Front. And then we have their Armed Forces Reserve holding box, pretty much the same as the other. Printed on one side only. And another player aid. This time we have the Egyptian... Uh, Air Force air tasking display. Pretty conventional to all the other ones, looks like. One sided. Now we come to something new unit identification uh, charts and tables. Let's see here. Let me get something clear here. This is some of the information that will be found on the various types of counters. Or ground and air and that type of deal. I'll let you look at that for a little bit, I guess. Then the air units, air to air ratings on the upper right, air to ground on the lower right. The type of unit. We have unit sizes, which are fairly standard. And we have ground unit type notes, command level notes. And then we have classes of units. So, oh, that's double sided. It has a train effects chart on the back. Well, that's handy dandy. These will all go into plastic sleeves. All right, what else we have here? Uh oh, more combat type tables or something. Bar lev, indirect fire table. We have the air-to-air -air table and the air-to-ground, which is printed on one of the other charts and in the rules, I do believe. We have the airdrop table. And we have the surface-to-air missile and the anti-aircraft artillery combat tables. And we have the direct fire tables. I like that. And on the back, it's, nothing's on the back. Looks like another unit identification chart. Yeah, pretty much like the other one. So both players can have a train effects chart and a unit identification chart. And one of these things, another indirect fire table chart. That kind of stuff. So that's nice. Both players get two sets of charts. That'll make that very nice and handy. And now we come to the counters. This is sheet number one front. It looks like they're printed. Um, very nicely printed. Die cut centering looks good. 
don't know how easy or hard they will be to punch out. Um, they look like they might, if you want, uh, require a little bit of trimming, but you know, clipping, whatever. But I don't think that's a big deal. Looks like they're color coded by command or color coded by command. I can't remember what those fortifications were called. I thought they were called the Barlev Line, maybe, and each of those fortifications, I don't remember what their name was. Um, but they were all along the Sinai front um, on the west bank of the Suez Canal. Anyway, that's what those look like in the backside. Look like they may be at a depleted uh, state or something. Okay, that's sheet number one, front and back. Uh, let's see, this is sheet number two, front. Looks like some markers. Is this upside down? Well, of course it is. Why would it be any other way? Okay, here we go. Yep. Die cutting is nice. The graphics are nice. I like the color coding of different commands. I really do like the graphics. Um, yeah. Compass Games has had some issues, as far as I'm concerned, with some of their graphic uh, depictions on the counter artwork. But it seems like they're getting better as time goes by. Alright. And on the back, the Arab units, I'm sure we have. They are depleted or reduced sides. Nice graphics. I do like the fact that you can use NATO symbols or ICOM symbols. And we have some really darker units here. Let's see if we can tell what these are. I don't know. These might be some of the Arab alley allies. They might be Syrians. Well, they might be Syrians as far as that goes. I don't know. I'm guessing they're probably Syrians on the Golan front. Backs are the same. These more Sinai Arab units? I don't know. The Egyptian Third Army, yes. Interesting. Okay, what else we got? Wow, these must be intervention counters maybe? Maybe not? No? Who are these guys? What do they say? The Arab, Syrian Arab army. Okay, so the Syrians are in green. I don't know who the dark brown guys are. What do they say? They got MiG 21s, MiG 17s. Now oh, they're Egyptian general reserves, is what the darker brown ones are. So, green is Syrian. Okay, well, that makes sense. Cool. And on the back, of course, is going to be the reduced reduced side or whatever. Depleted, reduced, step loss. I don't know. All right. Well, I know one thing. I think if they put out a vassal module for this, I'll probably play the vassal module. I'm not so sure I want to go through all the trouble of cutting and punching all these out. But, eh, you know, we'll see. All right, looks like we have the different elevations for uh, aircraft or weather or something. And now we get to some markers. And this is the last sheet. This is sheet number eight front. And I have it upside down again. <sighs> Fired markers. More, uh, whatever those were. Man, I don't know what those were. I can't remember. Anyway. On the back, we have more fired markers, first fire, bridges, morale. Well, these had something to do with the uh, Arab uh, command thing or something. I don't know. I'm just shooting from the hip here. I will go ahead and pull our setup map and kind of look at it. 
separately kind of give you an idea what they look like uh, when they're set up. Okay, we saw this map on the back of the bar box. This is the Suez map. I guess we could do just like a little map walk here real quick. We have up here Fort Syed and let's see the Raz, Raz al Arish or Aish. Uh, I'm not going to try and pretend to understand what they're, how you pronounce them. We have here Alcantara, Al Bala, Al Ferdan, and then Al Ishmaelia, and then some more Egyptian towns, which I'll not even try to pronounce. I think I can get Fayed. Down here. Have the Suez, southern part of the Suez, it looks like. And here's the Bar Lev line, as far as I know. Over here, sorry for the sh shadow, sorry for the um, glare. We have Beer Gift Africa. We know that one. The Get I Pass. And the Mitla Pass. And we'll go up here. We we'll got up here. Part of the Mediterranean up here. Bay of Kina. This looks like one of the major roads leading over to the Suez Canal. So that's just kind of a quick map walk. Uh, the Suez map. Looks like we have a bunch of, what do we have up here? More holding boxes, the 118th Mechanized Brigade, we have the Egyptian turn record track, and I'm not sure, we have transit boxes with the air rooms. Uh, we have the Sharm El Sheikh holding box. I think that was at the very bottom of the uh, Suez Canal, we're opening into the Red Sea, could be wrong. Then we have the Israeli uh, turn record track. All right, let's look at the other map now. Okay, here we have the Bar Lev Golan map. Starting down here, we have the Sea of Galilee. And we will just go on up the left-hand side of the map and cross over to the right and then down, I guess. Uh, let's see, we have the Jordan River, man, this is terrible lighting here, apologize for that, let's see if I can take care of part of that, yeah, not much. Uh, we have the town of Gonan, and let's see, off to the right we have Nafke, Nafke, I don't know how you pronounce these names. And we come up here to... I'm not sure what this area is. I'm guessing it's off limits. It's Lebanon. Okay. Please just look around a little bit more. Go up here. What do we have? We have Damascus in the upper right hand corner. We have Katna. Kan Ashaka. Shake. Whatever. Shake. Whatever. Al Kiswa. And we have the Al Awaj, Awaj River. I know this is very, very amateurish on my part. The town of Sasa, Kenkar, various mountains, Tel Shams and Tel Marie, Harfa. Did they have uh, Mount Hermon? Or am I just missing it? Uh, maybe I just missed it. Maybe I'm not paying attention. Um, more uh, Arab, uh, more Syrian type towns that I don't know or understand or can't pronounce. But anyway, the map looks really nice. I like the Sam Defense uh, locations. And I'm not sure what this place is. But it looks like it's a fortified position. Could be important to somebody. Al Hara. 
Kathir Shams. And we have some more hills or mountains. Tel Antar, Tel El Alakia, Tel Mashara, Tel El Mal. And let's see down here we have Rooster Ridge somewhere. Let's see if you can see it up there. Now is it in the picture? Where am I at? By Quinetra. There it is, just above Kuna Kunit Kunitra. Something like that. Anyway, the graphics are nice. Um, really pleased with the map. The rest of the stuff on here is pretty much the same information as on the Sinai map. So there you have it. This is what's in the box of the latest Compass game. Barlev, the 1973 Arab Israeli War. Um, I'm going to give this a big thumbs up on graphics. Um, we'll see how the actual rules work in the playbook and how all that comes together, but so far I'm pretty impressed. Um, I'm very pleased with what I see, so anyway, hopefully you'll get some value out of this. If nothing else, just turn off the volume and uh, just look at the pictures. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say at the moment. Um, uh, read some stuff about it. I haven't read anything about it. I haven't, uh, you know, don't follow any forums or anything like that. So I don't know what people are saying about it. But at the moment, I'm going to give it... Uh, pretty high marks in the graphics department, which is important to me sometimes, sometimes not. Um, but I couldn't or can't or can't afford to find the original ones. I think the GDW one would have been one I would have picked up, but hey, this is what I have and I think I'm going to be very happy with it. So until later, 